Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. I would like to kindly thank each one of you for joining us live from Mahsa University, Banda Saujana Putra campus. My name is Ainu Fadlin Binti Othman. I'm from the Faculty of Health Sciences, Mahsa University, and I will be moderating our today's webinar session. This webinar is hosted by the Faculty of Health Sciences, Massa University, with the title of Postmortem Computer Tomography, PMCT, The Insight to Forensic Imaging. Dear viewers, before we proceed further, I would like to give all of you a brief overview of our medical imaging programs offered by the Faculty of Health Sciences, Massa University. Let me share with all of you my screen now. Okay, here we have the Department of Medical Imaging, Faculty of Health Sciences, Massa University presentation, uh, program presentation. All right. So based on this first, first slide of presentation here, we are showing you the advancement in medical imaging field. All right. For, for, for those who are unfamiliar with the medical imaging field, in the medical imaging field, we offer a very constructive teaching and learning experiences here in Massa University in order to produce a very competent radiographers or also known as imaging technologies. The radiographer is the one of the healthcare personnel who's responsible in every technical skill aspect and also responsible towards the image in delivering imaging procedures to deliver a very uh, 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 to deliver patient care towards the patient in order to produce high quality images to our radiologists using variety of imaging modality that having high diagnostic value. All right, so the medical imaging field is among of the rapidly developed medical technology in healthcare, uh, uh, healthcare services. The advancement, as you can see from the slides, uh, in the technology itself, from the hardware and also software, and nowadays, we are now introduced the AI, tech, uh, AI technology uh, with the embedded tools uh, with our current uh, modality, all right, uh, that requires a very skillful technologies, a very skillful radiographers who are willing to upgrade their knowledge and skill uh, in this advancement in medical imaging field such as the specialist in um, ma magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, specialist in computer tomography, or even the hybrid technology. Uh, we have also the hybrid technology such as we have PET CT uh, scanning, the um, mammography or the breast imaging. We have the advancement in the breast tomosynthesis modality and also uh, specifically in the cardiac imaging, right? So we consider our medical imaging field a very advanced imaging technology is rapidly developed nowadays. So here in Massa University, we offer medical imaging programs that provide the student with uh, hands-on uh, hands clinical and also laboratory experiences uh, to practice the skill in patient care, in delivering the patient care, and also in delivering basic medical uh, procedures. So here we have in our slide, uh, the lab images, all right, uh, the facility that we offer in our laboratories. Besides the, Besides the general radiography technology, we also have the area, the other area of specialization, such as the MRI application, ultrasonography, PET scan or PET application, and computer tomography application, interventional radiology, medical image analysis, medical image processing, Specialization in nuclear medicine and also specialization in angiography procedures. 
So in Masa University, the medical imaging programs are all full accredited by the medical by the Malaysian Qualification Agency. We also have our lecturers, the experienced teaching staff who are involved in the teaching uh, and learning delivery. We have also offered the students with the clinical experiences with the reputable clinical posting center uh, in private sector and also in the government sector all over the Malaysia. We also have our facilities such as we have extreme x-ray machine for the, for the study of purpose for prepare the, patient, the student with the clinical setting before we send the student for the, clinic, the actual clinical experience. As our field is considered as a sector that in demand, always in demand, so there's a, here, we, we, we want you to start your education with us. And we also offer a comparable fees available here in Masa University. Why you, choo why you should choose medical imaging field, right? Because we are dealing with a very high technology field and also the advancement in medical imaging technology. If you are interested in uh, to, to give service towards the patient, we have this medical imaging field to be your choice in your study. You can also have a working experience to work abroad as, as well as, uh, as a radiographer or imaging technologist. We can offer the, once you get graduated from our program, you can have also the opportunity to further your studies or specialization in the specific modalities within the medical imaging field. All right, so let's move on to our programs offered in Masa University. We have Bachelor of Medical Imaging Honors. This is a four-year program, but if you are from the diploma entry students, so you can reduce the time to three years program. Here we have the entry requirement for Bachelor of Medical Imaging. The list of entry requirement for medical, Bachelor of Medical Imaging. And here the program structures in year one of study, year two, during your year two of study, year three, come into a very specialized modules already year four list of the courses okay, in your year four in bachelor of medical imaging which also include the research project besides that we also offer bachelor of medical imaging honors program with open and distant learning mode also in four as a four-year program for diploma entry, we can offer the uh, reduce of the duration to three years. Here we have the entry requirement for BMI ODL, Open and Distant Learning Mode. In terms of program delivery, the program delivery method may include the e-learning and group discussion Practical and cl practical clinical practice and also project work, lectures and tutorial, case study, clinical portfolio, and also other presentations. Okay, here we have, I'm sharing with all of you our several uh, sessions with the prospect. Uh, to enter our Bachelor of Medical Imaging programs. Uh, we conducted the briefing, it's very specific briefing in our laboratory so the future prospect can have the experience to uh, look into uh, the equipment that we offer in our laboratory. We have also another uh, type of demonstration here using the simulator for computer tomography, teaching and learning. And the next image showing 
the excitement shown by our, our graduates okay, during their convocation. Here we have uh, the classroom environment here in Masa. We, we, uh, we provide a very conducive classroom and also interactive uh, way in teaching and learning. We have a very conducive uh, computer labs here in Masa University. All right. Once you graduated from the program in medical imaging, you, become, you may become a radiographer in, in the private sector, in government sector, in variety of healthcare services, service provider, which as a radiographer, your role become, a, uh, you, you can play your role uh, in vital part of confirming any diagnosis, medical uh, diagnosis, assist in decision regarding treatment and future care uh, of the issue or disease, provide appropriate patient care and empathy towards the patient during our medical imaging procedure. And also, you will work around and liaise with other members of in healthcare uh, fraternity for the betterment of the patient. All right, so here I'm sharing with you the career pathway from the diploma level in medical imaging field. So you may become the radiographer, uh, application specialist, and when you further study to the, to the bachelor level, bachelor degree level, and from there you may also further your study in master, and master degree and PhD if you are interested towards the academic uh, field to become an academician and also to become a researcher that specialize in a variety of modality that are available within the medical imaging field. Okay, here we have uh, uh, alumni uh, distribution okay, uh, from Masa University. To become a radiographer, some of them further study and also become the spe application specialist who work with the uh, uh, manufacturers, okay. Uh, company, all right, uh, to provide the equipment in medical imaging field. Okay, here's some testimonial from our former student. We have here Miss uh, Noor Karina. She's now as a work as a radio working as a radiographer in Subang Jaya Medical Center. Also, here we have uh, Miss Aina Kamila. Uh, she's now working as a radiographer also in uh, in Qatar, but she's currently with us in Bachelor of Medical Imaging programs as a part-timer student. And we have Mazie, uh, work, working as an uh, MRI technologist in Iran. Okay, so that's all for the overview of programs offered by the Medical Imaging. Uh, so here we have the Department of Medical Imaging. We are located at the Level 6 Unity Building, Masa University at Bandar Sarjana Putra Campus. Okay, for further discussion about our program, please feel free to contact us through Masa website or our faculty Facebook page to know more about our programs, or you may leave the comment and we surely will get back to you very soon. Your question concerning the webinar session can be listed in the chat box for discussion during the Q&A session. Dear viewers, an e-certificate will be provided for this webinar and to be eligible for the certificates, please fill in the survey form the link to this survey will be provided at the end of the webinar and can be found in the comment section. Okay, dear viewers, let's move on to our webinar for today entitled Postmortem Computed Tomography PMCT The Insight to Forensic Imaging. Our topic today will provide an overview of forensic radiology. Even though the traditional autopsy still remain the best method and also considered as gold standard for post 
post-mortem examination, but the contribution of diagnostic imaging tools to dynamic autopsy result cannot be denied. Medical images uh, serve to provide additional information for post-mortem examination as well as to broaden the decision before autopsy. Before autopsy. So this webinar looks into the overview of the forensic radiology, contribution of medical images and role of radiographers in forensic radiology. And this webinar also explores the cases which are referred to the radiology department or radio, uh, forensic radiology department or forensic radiology unit in the medical centers. So our speaker for today will discuss further about the medical imaging modality, which is the post-mortem computer tomography in short SPMCT and the required techniques in performing PMCT the before, during, and after examination care will also be explained within this webinar. All right, without any further delay, let me now introduce to all of you our speaker for today. Here we have Miss uh, Siti Aisha Munira Boham. Miss Siti Aisha Munira is our medical imaging lecturer. She holds a Master of Health Sciences, Medical Imaging, and Bachelor of Radiography and Diagnostic Imaging from the International Islamic University in Malaysia, IIUM. She has worked as radiographer before joining the academic field in Masa University. Can we have Ms. Siti Aisha Munira? Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Hi, Siti Aisha Munira. Waalaikumsalam, Miss Ainul. How are you, Miss Ainul? Yeah, I'm good. How about you? Yeah, I'm great. I'm feeling so great today. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> so our topic for today seems quite creepy, right? <laughs> oh, it's quite creepy, but when we go into the slide, yeah. it's no longer creepy. It becomes excited. Okay, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, so. Yes, yeah, so hopefully we may have a very great sharing session about the topic today, Miss Siti. Inshallah, we will. Yeah. All right. For, uh, and now, shall I uh, pass the stage uh, to you, Miss Siti Shamunira? All right, thank you, Miss Ainul, for the introduction. So, um, um, so first of all, uh, I would like to say uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning to all the dear viewers. So, uh, I wish that all, all of you are in the best health and in the best condition right now. So, as being introduced, I am Sita Aisha Munira. So, I'm one of the medical imaging uh, lecturers in Masa University. So for a given session today, um, I would like to share with uh, all the dear viewers uh, a topic entitled Postmodern Computed Tomography, PMCT, which is through this topic, we are going to go inside into the forensic imaging. So uh, for today's sessions, uh, I'm going to share the knowledge. Okay, it means that I'm not expert, but just sharing a knowledge. And also, I would like to share the knowledge from the clinical uh, perspective that is uh, shared by one of the students. Okay, so without further ado, let me present the slide first. Right, so all right, so here we go. The slide. So, as we can see here, so again, I repeat the title is Postmortem Computed Tomography PMCT Insight into the Forensic Imaging. And, and then, um, throughout the session, I'm going to uh, cover the definition of the autopsy, 
and what is considered as the forensic imaging, how the forensic imaging contribute to the success of the autopsy result, and what is the role of the radiographer in the forensic imaging. And most importantly, I'm going to uh, share the knowledge about PMCT, post-mortem computed tomography, in terms of the protocols, in terms of the images, in terms of the uh, patient care during, uh, before and after the examination. And I'm also include the references here, uh, which I use for the slide making so that if the viewers are interested with the topic, so the viewers can go for the reference and look the detail about the uh, forensic imaging using PMCT. All right, so first of all, we need to know what is autopsy. So autopsy represents the examination of a body after its death in order to determine the cause and manner of the death. So it means that if, if a person already died, so we want to know what happened to this person that can cause he or she to die and how, uh, how the death process occurred. And also, we want to evaluate any disease or injury that may be present within the dead body. And autopsy is uh, actually a Greek word, okay, it comes from the Greek word, which is autopsia, means to see for oneself, means that we want to cut open the body to see what can cause the death of a person. And uh, according to history, the first autopsy can be detected uh, since uh, 3000 BC in ancient Egypt. And during that time, the autopsy is conducted because of the religious factor. It's not for med uh, medication or it's not for the uh, knowing the cause of the death. And at that time, the type of the autopsy that conducted is uh, mummification. So autopsy can be divided into two types. Uh, one is the forensic and number two is the clinical. So forensic autopsy is the one that is performed in the case of the suspicious, violent and unknown cause of the death. Meanwhile, the clinical uh, autopsy is uh, performed in the hospital by the pathologist uh, with, the with the consent from the disease neck skin of in order or with the, cons uh, with the consent from the uh, uh, family or the guardians of the person who had died uh, in order to find and better understand about the cause of the death. Okay, so next, we already know about the autopsy. Next, let's go for the forensic imaging. Okay, so forensic imaging here, I include a few of the references that can be referred later about the forensic imaging. So forensic imaging is the use of images, which is the medical images, okay, the images that is acquired using the medical imaging modality, for example, conventional, uh, for example, CT, MRI, and these images are used to explain and document the finding for forensic and medical, medical legal purpose. And also uh, in death investigation, postmortem imaging or forensic imaging are frequently conducted prior to traditional autopsy in order to accurately locate the trauma and pathological changes in the disease. So usually forensic imaging conducted first, then uh, after the forensic done, then there will be the traditional autopsy. So um, this can provide more accurate location of the trauma. And in some traumatic death, such as fatal motor vehicle accident, the post-mortem imaging or forensic imaging has the ability to detect and assume the fatal trauma, or means that to assume the severity of the trauma for the dead person. And forensic imaging contribution. So what uh, forensic imaging contribute to the successful autopsy? Okay, as mentioned uh, earlier, the traditional autopsy remain the best method and gold standard for the post-mortem examination. It means no other examination can uh, overcome the traditional autopsy. However, forensic imaging uh, can help in providing additional. Okay, it means that the forensic imaging or the forensic radio uh, radiology cannot substitute the uh, traditional autopsy. It can help in providing the information in terms of broaden the decision for the pathologies, for the forensic staff before the traditional autopsy can be done. 
And the forensic imaging also help to narrow down the autopsy scope means that the traditional autopsy that conducted after that can focus on the specific abnormality. And with the images from the forensic imaging, it can help to view the injury or the fracture in three dimensions and can reduce the superimposition of the anatomical structures. Okay, so rule of the radiographer. Forensic imaging uh, is a very important field. Very uh, means that it is important because we need to know the cause of death of a person. So the staff who works in the forensic imaging must be uh, uh, effective enough to help uh, the success of the examination. So as a radiographer, so the radiographer need to be an experienced radiographer who has received the training in the forensic training. He or she, the radiographer, must be uh, familiar with all the modalities that involve in the forensic imaging. For example, we have the CT, we have MRI, so different type of the modality, we have different acquisition, different protocol need to be uh, conducted. And the radiographer also should aware and comply with the local uh, protocol, forensic imaging and uh, SOP of the department within the hospitals. Okay, postmortem computed tomography. So this is the main uh, highlight of the topic today. Postmortem computed tomography (PMCT). So PMCT is a, a postmortem radiology technique that use CT scan to obtain detailed information from the body, especially for the forensic cases. Means we are using the CT images from the CT modality to detect the. Um, Case, uh, to help in knowing the cause of death for the forensic cases. And uh, a study showed that as compared to the conventional or traditional autopsy, the accuracy of PMCT scan in detecting injuries and cause, and cause of death was observed to range 20% to 80%. So it uh, showed that the PMCT can have a higher percentage of accuracy in providing the uh, in providing the result for the autopsy. So uh, this uh, the advantages of the PMCT it helps in detecting the fractures of the bone, fluid in the airway, gas in the intestinal organ, major hemorrhages, fatty liver, stone, and bullet fragments. However, despite of having various of advantages in detecting the pathology, abnormalities, and fractures, PMCT has some uh, limitation. Okay, it could miss certain important lesion in certain regions, such as in cardiovascular injuries and minor vascular injury. So that's why uh, the PMCT is a substitute for the traditional autopsy. So there is still need for the traditional autopsy to go for the certain uh, pathology or certain uh, abnormality that could not be detected by PMCT. Okay, so uh, for today clinical, uh, for the uh, knowledge of the PMCT, uh, today it is based on the uh, uh, examination or the uh, forensic imaging at the Institute Perubatan Forensic Negara HKL IPFN at the Hospital Kuala Lumpur. So these are shared by one of the students who are really keen to share the knowledge today. Um, so the CT scanner used at the HKL for the forensic imaging is uh, the type is the Toshiba Aquilian uh, 64 slices and there at the HKL the forensic imaging conducted is a part of the uh, forensic procedure prior to the autopsy, before the traditional autopsy conducted. So we do the forensic imaging and it is performed on the disease body, of course, the dead body. And the dead body is issued with the form P61 form uh, by the investigating police officer. So the body, the dead body will come to the uh, will be bring to the city uh, examination room with the body tag uh, with the police number. Okay, so nowadays PMCT has raised the popularity worldwide. Okay, and mostly in Malaysia, why it become uh, famous to do the PMCT uh, uh, first. Uh, uh, number one, the, dry, the driven factors is because of the religious factor. 
for example, the Muslim, for the Muslim, uh, we are being taught that uh, that body also feel pain and feel um, uh, hurt when it been uh, handled improperly. Okay, so that's why uh, most of the Muslim family reject the traditional autopsy because they uh, understand that when we cut, uh, we dissect, when the pathologist dissect and cut open the body, so it can cause pain to the dead body. So they don't want the pain to the their beloved one, so they are rejected the traditional autopsy. So with the emergence of the PMCT, it could... Um, it helps for uh, so much for the Muslim families to know the cause of death for their beloved one. And the second driven factors is to facilitate the forensic pathologist. Okay, facilitate the forensic uh, pathologist. Uh, for example, in uh, planning for the pre-autopsy at the place that is difficult to be reached or unusual for the dissection. So it can provide uh, pre-planning for the autopsy procedure. And number three, to make it easier for non-medical persons such as judges, lawyers, police officers to understand about the forensic imaging. Because uh, for those persons who are not having the medical base, some of the medical terminology, uh, anatomical terminology are very uh, uncommon for them and very hard for them to understand. So with the help of the images, it can provide them a better understanding about the uh, how the manner of death or the cause of death happen for a person they are uh, investigating. And number four, to support the post-mortem finding, especially for those in other field of the medical profession. And last but not least, um, for the data storage and easy retrieval. Okay, so medical images are stored digitally in the online cloud storage. So it, uh, so there is no need for the physical storage to store the image. So we can store the image online and easy to retrieve whenever the image uh, required. And um, there in, in the forensic uh, room or in the city room, uh, so we need uh, a lifting trolley, okay, uh, with the weight capacity 450 kg. And this is because when uh, lifting a body, a dead body from a trolley into onto a, uh, a couch before it goes into the gantry, it need to be uh, lifted carefully because mishandling during the um, lifting of the dead body can change or alter the nature of the fractures or uh, the natures of the injury that happened to the patient, uh, to the body. And this could lead to the misinterpretation uh, of the images and could lead to uh, inaccuracy result of the autopsy. And positioning of the body also need to be positioned accurately as the uh, scanning for patient alive. That's how we are going, we are performing the scanning for the dead body. Localizer must be placed at the correct uh, location for the specific protocol. And here the uh, PMCT protocol available. If you can look on the left side, uh, here we have the different type of the body. So the uh, radiographer can choose different type of the scanning protocol depending on the patient, whether the patient is adult, uh, child or patient is trauma. And the scan range or the selection of the examination is depending on the type of the nature of the examination. For example, you. Can can hold, you can choose the whole body or chest. Okay. And for each type of the part of the, the body, require for different set of the. Okay. So this uh, postmortem CT adult body. Okay. So these are the protocols. So the protocol name is the postmortem adult body for whole body two blocks and positioning of the patient here also stated uh, technique and reconstruction. So basically, I'm not going to go detail uh, on this because this is very technical part and uh, a radiographer who works in the uh, first imaging should know how to uh, set the patient, uh, set the protocol to choose the protocol and position the patient on the uh, couch. 
And uh, post-mortem CT angiography also can be conducted. Okay, so CT angiography is to the uh, is the study of the blood vessel. Means that uh, the contrast media, which is a solution that can enhance the uh, properties of the blood vessel. So when we are imaging the blood vessel, we can see the enhancement of the blood vessel inside the on the image. So contrast media will be injected into the blood vessel. So it is used for the study of the blood vessel to know whether uh, any uh, diseases related to the, with the uh, uh, cardiovascular system or the blood vessel system. And postmortem for child 1 to 12 years old. So, okay, so uh, different uh, age of child will have different protocol and this one is for the protocol for baby or the new net. Okay. And uh, for the patient, uh, for the dead body who already like uh, decomposed, okay, uh, means uh, it become flesh. So there is also a specific protocol for the CT flesh. Okay, so the protocol name is for the flesh. So position means need to include all the flesh on the couch and place in the middle of the table. And for the uh, dead body that already become skeleton, so we have the whole uh, skeleton protocol. Uh, so the skeleton need to be arranged on the uh, uh, couch, okay, with the supine position and need to insert uh, feet first, okay. And also we have the protocol for the single bone, okay. And this is the bone of the femur. So the bone will be placed on the sponge onto the couch and also um, the bone uh, is put at the center of the field of view. And uh, post-mortem CT is also used for COVID-19. Okay, we all know that COVID-19 already, uh, we already experienced the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. And then it is a very useful modality uh, in detecting uh, death, in knowing the uh, death of the patient due to COVID-19. So as you can see here, this is the uh, uh, city room, okay, the condition of the staff within the city room uh, when uh, examining the COVID-19 patient. So all the staff are wearing PPE and uh, the room must be sanitized and uh, uh, the body also will be covered with a lot of the uh, cover. And uh, for the images of the COVID-19, okay, this one are the images that I took from uh, uh, literature or the research okay, that I used for the um, topic today. So uh, uh, as on the left hand, if you can see, Azil PMCT scan here showing the... Oh, sorry. Okay, here we go back. Okay, Azil PM CT scan of the chest. And here we have the two arrows, okay, the blue one and the red op is opacification. And, and the, uh, the red one is a show associated with the COVID-19 patient on the alive patient and this also can be detected on the dead body. Meanwhile, the right hand here, we have the coronal PMCT scan of the chest showing the consolidation. Okay, this is the consolidation happened for COVID-19 virus. All right, and so special consideration. So as a radiographer, okay. Uh, what you need to uh, do or how you could handle the situation do, uh, before, during and after the examination. So pre, uh, before you need, attendance need to documents means all the detail of the dead body need to document, okay. And then make sure the machine are running smoothly. Uh, correct registration of the PM number, do not unzip the plastic body bag, okay. So if the body come with the bag, do not unzip it because we are going to uh, leave the body onto the gantry without uh, open the zip uh, and then uh, do the examination without opening the zip also. Okay, do not adjust and move the body without supervision of the forensic staff, okay? Because I mentioned if you misposition or if you uh, 
improper, improperly uh, handle the dead body, it could affect the nature of the injury. Okay, the end to ensure the forensic staff is around handling uh, the body lifting onto the table. So you need a forensic other forensic staff to help you also during the examination. Um, during the examination uh, means that you need to uh, ensure that you are choosing the correct protocol. Okay, for example, in the pediatric cases, so you need to use the correct uh, protocol whether the patient is, whether the dead body is one to 12 years old or whether the dead body is a new need, okay? And must ensure the vertex of the head is fully covered and scan the body as be presented in the body bag. So do not uh, open the body bag and take the body outside the bag, okay? Do not ever do that. And post, uh, pro, post procedure, burn the CD and document it. Okay, make sure all the images are being burned and sent to archive. Usually, uh, we send the images to the cloud storage and then later we can retrieve the images from the cloud storage. And okay, CT special application dental. Okay, so why uh, PMCT is very useful uh, modality in assisting the traditional autopsy. Number one, because we can use the uh, for uh, dental identification. Okay, so the we can use the morphology or the anatomical structure of the dead body to identify a person. Okay, so forensic odontology is one of the primary approaches in identify the in identification because the uh, dentition is unique to each individual. Okay, because everyone has different uh, anatomical structure of the teeth. Okay, so. It helps in the forensic identification of the disease, for example, in the mass uh, fatality accident, for example, in the terrorist, risk, terrorist attack or natural disaster that we only, uh, we don't have the uh, features of the patient, but we can still uh, identify the body through the uh, teeth. And also in CT, we have the calcium scoring, okay? For example, uh, sudden cardiac death, SCD related to the atherosclerotic coronary artery disease, ACAD, resulting in myocardial infection. So we want to know whether the patient had died due to the myocardial infection. So we can calculate the coronary artery calcium score through the CT application. And uh, post-mortem PMCT allow the visualization and quantification of coronary calcification before the autopsy. So we can uh, measure, we can uh, visualize and measure the calcium scoring, okay, to know whether the patient had died due to the uh, myocardial infection or not. And another special CT application is for the bullet fragment and for the fractures, okay? So as you can see images here, this is the 3D images of the uh, skull that show the uh, gunshot fracture, okay? So PMCT provide accurate illustration of the body lesion, visualization of the wound path, and very accurate localization of the bullets and their fragments, okay? As you can see from the image. Um, and uh, CT also can detect the body packer. For example, in case of the um, drug uh, transportation, okay, illegal drug transportation. So, um, uh, we can identify the multiple capsule or second of the foreign body within the large and small intestine, predominantly in the stomach. Okay, so usually uh, the drugs or illegal substances, okay, will be uh, wrapped in uh, layers of the plastic or condom, and uh, usually these materials are used because. Uh, it can avoid the radiographic detection. Okay, means it's uh, difficult to be detected on the radiograph, on the med uh, medical imaging modality. And uh, these uh, images are showing the decomposition artifact on the PMCT. So over the time, the dead body it can uh, decompose. Okay, the organs, uh, the tissue can decompose. So here is the earlier okay, the images of the decomposition this is the middle okay 
And this also decomposition artifact in PMCT uh, occur at the thorax and also abdomen. A is uh, at the thorax and B is the abdomen region. Okay, this is um, took from the uh, article. Okay, so azil non-contrast computed tomography image. So uh, here it show the uh, post motor gas through the soft tissue and organs, and we can have the fluid at the posterior region of the. Um, this uh, through the lung window here, we can appreciate the uh, fluid and intra can appreciate organs also can lead to the artifact on the PMCT. All right, so advantages of the PMCT. Okay, so um, as I mentioned before, the most driven factors why PMCT uh, has a rising popularity in Malaysia because of the uh, religion factors and also this advantages it uh, most suitable alternative for traditional autopsy, especially when the case is religious sensitive. Okay, or the family member of the disease cannot accept a traditional autopsy. Because not everyone loves their uh, beloved one to be hurt or to be uh, undergo something uncomfortable. Uh, high resolution CT also can provide best quality images in the forensic imaging, and uh, radiation exposure here is uh, not an issue. Okay, because we are exposing the dead body with the radiation, so radiation dose is not. Uh, uh, a limit to the patient, uh, to the dead body because they are no longer alive. And uh, number three, performing the autopsy on the disease who had an infectious disease such as tuberculosis or coronavirus uh, disease. So it can help the forensic imaging staff to prevent themselves themself from being affected by the from being affected or exposed by the uncertain pathogens. Okay, so these are the advantages of the PMCT that can that help uh, increase its popularity. Other than can provide a uh, detection for the um, various of the fractures or injuries. And limitation. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, limitation of the PMCT, it can miss diagnosis of the certain uh, tissue. So this misdiagnosis could have been caused by the low contrast non-enhanced images and the lack of the forensic-based perspective in searching of the anomalies and non-existent of the standard protocol in conducting the virtual autopsy. And... Um, now, the second limitation is that the positioning of the body is very vet, uh, vital in the PMCT as bad positioning could lead to generation of the image artifacts and alter the sustained injury. Okay, And this could lead to mis the, uh, misinterpretation of result uh, and in, or inaccuracy of the autopsy result. And uh, the possible existing artifact that can be observed on PNCT images, for example, we have the image noise, uh, beam hardening, uh, scatter or pseudo enhancement. However, uh, this uh, noise can be reduced with the interactive reconstruction available with the, uh, inside the uh, CT software. And, and another limitation is that... Uh, uh, the fractures and, and the changes of the body could occur why we need a lifting trolley that could help to lift the body from the trolley into the uh, table without uh, much altering the uh, injury or fracture of the uh, body. Okay. And these are the references also that I include for the um, uh, sh uh, sharing knowledge today. But uh, before uh, I end the session, okay, I uh, would like to, okay, I'm start the sharing for this slide first. 
because I would like to show with all the dear viewers the video uh, that can help you, the viewer, to better understand uh, understand about the PMCT in forensic imaging. And also, uh, you can have the uh, knowledge about the uh, staff perspective regarding the PMCT. For example, the perspective of the radiographer is uh, himself, the perspective of the uh, forensic pathologist and also the uh, uh, the staff works in the forensic investigation. Okay, so let me share with all of you the videos. Okay, so this one, I hope... Uh... Okay, so... My name's Tony Buxton. I'm a diagnostic radiographer and a forensic radiographer for New South Wales Health Pathology Forensic Medicine. When it comes to the coronial service, and particularly in New South Wales, the state coroner has, uh, wants to identify the person, where they died, and what was the cause of death. And the number one thing is the least invasive method. Now, imaging and toxicology are very low invasive. Imaging is virtually non-invasive. I appreciate concerns that families have about uh, doing invasive autopsies on their loved ones and only really confining it to those cases where it's absolutely necessary. And I understand and appreciate that. That's where I think the CT scan comes into its own. It's allowed us to essentially look internally at the body, but as I say, without even opening the body bag. It allows us to do imaging of a very detailed nature of the head and neck, chest and abdomen in particular, but also the limbs that can sometimes give us clues and definitive answers as to why their loved one has died. Scanning itself takes under 15 minutes, processing time half an hour after that, we could have information to be able to go through the rest of the coronial process. So we can get very quick information back and the family are aware and they know what's happening. So for example, if someone's suspected of having a heart attack, given their symptoms leading up to their death, maybe chest pain, shortness of breath and so on, we do a CT scan. We're often not able to identify that heart attack, that is the death of heart tissue as a result of that coronary artery occlusion, particularly well, uh, just by using a CT scan. On the other hand, if that heart attack has evolved over several days and it's resulted in a complication of a heart attack like a left ventricular rupture that's different blood will then accumulate in the pericardial cavity and that will show up on the ct scan and then that will give us a good clue as to the nature of the pathology and and often the cause of death underlying that so that cuts down a lot on time taken to investigate the case time taken to examine the body it cuts down on a lot of work health and safety issues, infection risk to staff, um, and allows uh, to, the ability for families to have the body of their loved one repatriated or returned to them much sooner than in days gone by. Yeah, so this to me is really awesome because what it also helps me to see is you can appreciate sort of beveling and the you know the shape of how the entry wound looks. It's it's interesting from the police perspective. One of the things that can be quite comfortable that we can provide visual identification of structures that they can relate to, and we have an imaging that's uh, called what we call surface rendering, and it actually looks like a skeleton or soft tissue. We can get a whole lot of information that makes it easier for the police to understand exactly what they're dealing with. I think overall CT scans are good news for families. However, there are some caveats or some restrictions or limitations to that. So the CT scan it does not replace the autopsy. It is a tool that's used to assist us in the investigation of the death. It does not replace the autopsy. However, there are certainly instances, particularly in cases of trauma, where enough detail can be gleaned from the CT scan to avoid an invasive autopsy. They are a permanent record and they're reviewable. So at any stage, once the CT scan is done, if somebody in the future wants to review those images and have a second look um, at what was going on with that person, then they're able to. Unlike plain x-rays, which 
were okay or satisfactory up to a point, but only got us so far. As, as a diagnostic radiographer, as a clinician for a very long time, you're always concerned about you're not doing no harm, you're looking after the welfare of the individual in your care. And I think that translates to forensics. Now, patients aren't alive, but I still talk to them. I explain what I'm doing in most cases. Um, and I feel that the, uh, if the family was speaking to me and asking me about it, I'm just saying, look, they're treated with the same care and respect as if they were alive and being part of the examination. And we do everything we can to assist as quickly and as safely as possible in the identification so they can move on uh, with the family arrangements. All right, so uh, uh, the, the video. About uh, uh, the you. Okay, dear viewers, we are having a, a little bit technical issue now. So we are waiting for Miss Siti Aisha Munira to come back to the stage. Okay. For meanwhile, oh yeah. Okay, hi. We can Ms. get her I back. Now, Luckily, now I can see. <laughs> I can yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Can you can see me? Okay, okay, okay. I did video. All right, let's see if we have. Uh, yes, yes. I uh, did the video. The, the video uh, finished. Uh, and suddenly oh, you right. disappeared. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Mr. Aisha Monira. Uh, All right. For a very insightful sharing session. Okay, if we, uh, dear viewers, if you have any question uh, for our speaker, uh, kindly please uh, leave any comments in the chat box. 
so that I can read through your question uh, concerning our topic for today. All right, let's see eh, if we have any question. Okay, we have one question uh, from Hanis MHS. Okay, thank you, Hanis, for your participation in our event today. Uh, her question is, uh, is there any other imaging modality applicable for forensic imaging? Ms. Siti? All right. Okay. Thank you, Miss Hanis, for the question. Yes, uh, there are also other imaging uh, modality applicable for the forensic imaging. Uh, for example, the uh, common one is we have the conventional radiography, means that uh, we are bringing the mobile X-ray unit, okay, it's go into the mortuary or the place where the forensic imaging will be taken. And then we are doing the examination there. For example, if I, I remember uh, those days when I'm still student, okay, I went to, I got a, a case uh, for imaging of the bones, okay? Uh, there are bones found at the some place. So during that day, uh, they are requested for the radiographer to go to the mortuary to uh, do the examination of the bone. So I went there with the radiographer, senior radiographer, we bring the uh, mobile unit there and we are examining the bone. So that's another uh, imaging modality that could help in the forensic imaging. And also we have the MRI. It's known as the post-mortem MRI, which, which can visualize the uh, soft tissue of the dead body. Okay. Uh, okay, hopefully uh, uh, that answered the question question from uh, Miss Hanis. I have one question uh, for you, Miss Siti. Okay. If there are any special criteria for the cases that usually refer to the forensic imaging? All right. Thank you, Miss Ainu. Wow, it's a great honor to have a question from the moderator today. Uh, yes, there are certain cases <laughs> that are referred uh, for the forensic imaging. For example, in the case of the murder, okay, for example, uh, there are murder happened. And then um, to know how the murder happened and is it what caused the murder, uh, the, that person died, okay. So the case will be referred for the forensic imaging. And uh, in another case, for example, in the case of the rape, uh, sodomy, MVA, and the death uh, in the custody. Or in, uh, for example, in the case of the uh, terrorist attack, okay? previously I mentioned about the dental identification or in the natural disasters, that you cannot detect the, uh, yeah. or you cannot identify the uh, person through the facials of are the part of the body but you have the dental so it can be used for the identification using the uh, modalities in forensic imaging so i hope this answer your question miss moderator yeah 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 sure not all the cases required forensic imaging basically yeah. right Okay, so I think perhaps that's the only time we have uh, Miss Siti for Q&A session. All right. All right, thank you once again. Uh, 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 in the beginning of this webinar, there's an uh, e-certificate will be provided and to be able to, uh, to eligible you for the certificate, you need to fill in the survey form. Um, provided in the chat box, the link already provided in the comment section, so you can uh, fill out the form from there. All right, so with that, we have come to the, the end of our today's session. So, to our again, to, to our dear speaker, thank you very much again for joining us uh, in today's webinar, sharing your knowledge research uh, your videos all right uh, in our knowledge sharing event 
and to our very keen and attentive viewers thank you for joining our webinar and we will, uh, we look forward to your comments your participation in our future events hosted by master university for further queries Please, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us through master website and also visit our social media platforms. Then have a pleasant day, everyone. See you and assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye bye, everyone.